All right, and we're live. Hello, Phil. Hello, Rachel. How's it going today? Uh, it's actually, it's going pretty nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're hunkering down for snow in Seattle, which is going to be a huge mess. Yeah, it's, I guess, we'll see what happens with our weather this weekend. We had a ton of snow last weekend, mm -hmm. um, but it's like 60 mile an hour winds today. We'll see what happens with that. I don't know what that, I, I don't know the last time we've had wind like that, so I don't know what that means, actually. <laughs> Could mean crazy stuff, probably. Power outages, maybe? Very likely, yes. There's a bunch yeah. of people who've lost power already. Oh, that's scary. Well, I hope you stay safe and warm. Thanks. Um, and let me distract you by asking what sort of beverage you're having. Uh, this is um, some, some coffee in my fabulous <laughs> buffalo mug. Uh, yes. Buffalo, New York, the city, not just like you're a big fan of Buffalo, the animals. I mean, Buffalo, the animals are also great, but yeah, it's Buffalo, New York, the city, which is where I grew up. So, Cheers. And I've got just hot water with lemon. I was going to have another coffee, but then I was like, I'm jittery enough. And if I drink coffee now, the interview is going to go very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> hot water with lemon is good. I do. Sometimes I do hot water with honey. Um, mm. Yeah. The honey is really the point, I guess, but. You know, it's it's hot water. It's still it's still water. So it'll warm you up. You know. Yeah. So what are you working on these days? Oh boy. Um, can talk about. Yeah, that I can talk about. No, that's that's a good point. Uh, let's see. I just launched a playground yesterday, um, which is we did this really cool competition like eight years ago called Don't Overfit, and mm -hmm. it's this basically we build a data set that's designed to overfit and we give you a tiny number of samples to actually work with like a training of, I think the, the total data sets like 20,000 samples and the training set is 250 samples. Mm -hmm. So you've got this like brutally difficult problem. It's really hard not to overfit on it. Um, and that's the challenge is basically to take this little tiny thing and do what you can to not overfit on it. Um, will actually, um, Competed in the last one before he was before he was at Kaggle, oh, and did really well. Yeah, he's competing in this one. Uh, I guess we'll see how he does. Um, like he he wanted to maybe relive some old glory or something. Um, but uh, yeah, so I just launched that yesterday. Um, I've got a bunch of competitions in the works. I guess we we I guess we all do. Um, I've got a bunch of uh, metric work to do. Um, I handle I handle some of the metrics. And oh, I'm also doing a kind of um, some broad, some more broad metric work, doing some some high level um, additional framework around those. So that's mm. kind of an interesting thing. Ooh, um, I think I can talk about the fact that I'm working on some improvements to the news feed. Um, oh yes, yeah. So like when yeah. you log into Kaggle and you see all the like kernels that people are working on or whatever. Right, that list of like stuff that we think will be cool for you. Um, I'm working on that along with Sawyer. So we're, we're kind of uh, we're pairing up on that. It's really fun. Good. Yeah. That's, that sounds like it'll be an interesting project that will also make people's lives better. I <laughs> hope so. I really do. I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of you know, Jamie, who was the original creator of it, um, put in a lot of really interesting ideas and work on it. So hopefully we'll be able to kind of expand on all the cool stuff he did. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I look forward to seeing where that project goes. Thank you. I do too. <laughs> It'll be fun. I, I, you know, and we, we have really full schedules as it is the comp data scientists. I guess everybody probably does, but we, there's a lot of, um, there's you a lot of like, like firm deadlines. Like this yeah. does have to be done. There's a ton of firm deadlines and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like sudden time pressure mm. where, you know, you've got, something that needs to be done by X and it needs to get to you by X minus three and it gets to you by X minus one. And it's like, oh, okay, well, now I have only one to do what needed three. So it's, um, yeah, and with those hard deadlines, it, it creates a lot of, uh, it's tough to um, commit to doing something like working on the newsfeed in, mm -hmm. in sort of uh, any long-term way, but it's, it's uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see <laughs> to see how we pull it off. Yeah, definitely. Are you drawing on any of the uh, recommendation system works from the Netflix challenge, like way back in the day? 
oh my gosh, uh, I competed in that and did really poorly. For real? Yeah. Um, oh gosh, you're so old. <laughs> I thought that was, it sounded like a really fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean, there is some, you know, there is some kind of um, trying to figure out how much I can say. Um, <laughs> There, is, there are some elements of that kind of system um, involved. Um, there's also a lot of, you know, the, the amount of content produced on Kaggle is really enormous. So, and, and we're trying to create something that hopefully gives you a very focused view of things that you're interested in. So it's like that, that massive funnel is, is uh, kind of it makes for an interesting problem for the you know like a collaborative filtering system but it also creates the need for a whole lot of uh kind of uh intelligent filtering before it even gets to collaborative filtering so there's 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 a bunch of layers to, to making that into a workable system it's pretty cool yeah it sounds like a really interesting problem yeah, it is. Uh, if you'd like to hop on it, you are welcome to. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you have the time to, but. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I've got a lot of a lot of potatoes I'm juggling. Um, yep. But also, they don't have expiration dates. A lot of them, they're like potatoes that don't expire. Like blog posts. Blog posts are going to keep being relevant, you know. Hopefully, in the future. So. I think so, especially. I mean, you you do good work, so I, oh, I imagine. You do good work. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> And I think we, we might start getting into some more uh, NLP-ish aspects of, of the Now you got my attention. Too. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I come from a, uh, a pretty, I've been doing NLP for forever, um, even though I, I didn't work on it academically. Um, I've been doing it in industry since like the 90s, I guess, uh, not to date myself, but the 90s. Um, and so I'm always kind of looking for opportunities to to play in that space, and I think we will uh, with this. So you might be interested in going to ACL, maybe Knackle. Uh, it's going to be in Minnesota, I think, in like <laughs> May. I'm on the committee. I should know when and where the conference is going to be, but it's not like too too far from you. Oh no, that's uh, that's not too far. Um, yeah, could you send me the details? That'd be great. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I feel like that that rings a bell. It's the so the ACL is the big um, I'm sure you know NLP organization, professional scholarly society. I guess it would be, mm. um, and then ACL is the big international conference, and then NACL and AACL is the uh, North American conference. Cool. And there's going to be. There's a lot of workshops that I'm really interested in. There's one on um, evaluating text generation systems in particular that I am very interested in the papers from because that's such a hard problem. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, it, it's one I, I was actually I was just working on setting up an NLP problem yesterday and working with another Kagler on it. And one of the things that um, always bubbles up for me when I'm working on NLP is that if you think a problem is intuitive, you're probably wrong. I um, mean, intuitive for human, yes. Yes, exactly. Um, if you think, it, yeah, if you're looking at a problem and you're like, oh, the solution to this is very simple, then it probably isn't. Um, and so I find that um, that evaluating NLP is, is possibly one of the hardest parts of doing it correctly. Um, like there are so many metrics that just they're they're very specific. Um, there's so many algorithms that really like they work. They do something. They may not be doing exactly what you want to be doing with that data, though. Like it's yeah. it, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of assumptions that go into it, and I think that's that's what that intuition thing speaks to. There's a bunch of assumptions that you make that like they're probably not all exactly applicable to what you're doing. So I, that's part of the reason that I love NLP so much is just how, um, well, in part, because it can feel intuitive and then you can be like, I understand something, that's great. And then when you don't and you have to fix it, then you get that secondary, you know, that secondary good feeling of like, I found a problem and then I solved it. It's, it's, like, it's like a generator for those. So that's why I'm a fan. 
Yeah, it's definitely, it can be, I don't know, sometimes it's like you open up like a can of coffee, but inside is a room. Like, I feel like that's what NLP problems are like sometimes, because it seems like you know what a can of coffee is, you know how to use it, but then suddenly as you're, you know, interacting with it, it becomes infinitely more complex. Yes, that's such a great, that's a really good way to put it. Um, dude, that, that's exactly right. Like, it, you'll, that's what I, that's, um, that's what I found every time that I've, I've done something in industry is like you, you get into it and you know where you're going and then you're someplace completely different. And it's really fun to figure out how to structure the world so that you can make sense out of this. Yeah. And then you have to convince your boss that, hey, I'm working on something else for six months, but it's still really relevant. It's still actually the same problem, even though it looks different and I haven't handed you a system. And right. yeah. Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time doing that. Yes, <laughs> that was like that was like my early career was was that conversation ad nauseum for you know ten years or whatever. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, now that the field is more established and people have a better idea of how system building works, that isn't as necessary. I'm, I know it still comes up. I would hope so. I mean, I knew nothing. I was such a like total neophyte like i my first thing that i worked on was a named entity recognition and extraction mm -hmm. thing for a big document uh, collection system and i didn't know how any of it worked like i was barely a programmer and i just kind of was like oh i think we could solve it using this sure and and just jumped straight into it um so in the 90s so people were still into expert systems Oh yeah, like that was there was a strong recommendation that like somehow yeah, those rules, man. yeah absolutely so there was uh, there was a lot of um it was very like much an uphill upstream kind of thing to be doing um but I think actually kind of knowing nothing and coming into it completely blank was was a really good way to 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 introduce myself to the problem area really like. I think it was about a year of working on the project before somebody handed me a copy of, you know, statistical language processing. Um, and I was like, oh, people know how to do all this already. I, I'm, in, I'm in there like inventing everything myself. I'm like, oh, this is how this will work. Um, and I, of course, I was completely wrong on like 99% of it. We still shipped um, and it, you know, worked. But, you know, later versions, I was like, oh, People have figured this out, but I didn't know that at the start. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that that was like, I'm hoping that people. So that was kind of the the genesis for some of those those conversations about like, well, maybe this is how it should work, um, but I really don't know because <laughs> I really didn't. Um, but yeah, hopefully now that it's more uh, established, and I feel like. Uh, kind of less of a huge leap to get into. Yeah. You know, I feel like almost everybody getting into it back then, like all of my competition at least, were all you know very heavy academics or at least um, companies that had you know gone out and hired a bunch of you know very good academics. And you know I was just some guy in a in a company that didn't know anything about it, and I knew less, and it was yeah. And all the intro material was like physically printed down and in pearl. I'm just like very inaccessible. Yes, yeah, that was another. That was something that I mentioned to the 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 Kagler that I was working on the NLP problem with yesterday was just that how hard how discoverability was basically nil back then. Like if if you had a problem, you had to know where to look and you had to go by the book, and then you had to read the whole book and find you know that part that you didn't know about. Um, so I'm I'm so like happy that it is the way it is now. Um, I'm so glad that it's moved so far beyond that. Um, partly because I forget everything. So whenever I come into a problem, I'm like, oh, I remember nothing about how to do any of this. Um, you know, back then I would have had to like go dig through all my books again, but now I can just, you know, go find a masterful tutorial written by I don't know, maybe the the wonderful Rachel, possibly. So, yeah. Um, 
is still like it's definitely easier to physically find and look at the information, but there's still like the barrier of like knowing what words to Google. Like it's mm. really surprising to me how much of like my use of my degree is, oh, I know the name of this task. I can go look it up and find a data set for it, right? Right. Yes. Uh, I think that's like 110% of the utility of any experience I've had. Uh, is I don't know. I don't know what I did right. I don't know what I did wrong necessarily. Um, I probably did it really badly, but I know what I should look for the next time I need to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, which is, I don't know, it's one of those skills where you just have to talk to the right people or like spend the time digging through it yourself, doing like the Wikipedia chain to find the exact article that you want. And Right, and then, well, I don't know if you have this problem, but like understanding what all those things are saying to me and like, the yeah. like I'm like, Oh, I'm pretty sure this is what I, I'm thinking about, but I actually don't know. Um, yeah, you, you bring up meeting people, though, and I think that that's another important thing that I I did not do when I was, you know, working early on. You know, the people who were doing what I was doing were my competition, and so they were going to be like, "Yeah, let's sit down for coffee, and we'll tell you everything you need to know." Right? I think I tried to email one of them once, and they were basically like, "Just, just." Don't email me again. This is going to look really bad if we actually like interact, right? Like, um, but nowadays, I feel like I feel like every person that I meet who has an interest in the space has and has done kind of you know who has tried something in it has a really interesting um, set of ideas about how it can work. Um, I, I think that's really exciting. Like people who are new to to ML, people who are you know old hands at ML but just getting into NLP. Um, even people, you know, like you and me, who've been doing it for a long time, and but are, you know, coming at new problems all the time. Um, I feel like I, I get something new out of every person that I meet in the space, um, which you know is probably true for for machine learning in general. Um, and I, I don't think I have any counter examples for machine learning in general, but I've I've definitely been impressed with how kind of open and um, just willing to kind of share in the wonderment of of natural language processing the nlp community is so i wonder if that's um has something to do with the also shift in the community towards open source solutions and open sourcing things in general yeah absolutely i think um you know one of the cool things that i got out of doing all that work back then was i had to do everything by hand because you weren't allowed to use libraries that used, you know, GPL, right? And those were the only open source libraries were like GPL or maybe like GPL2 or LGPL or something. Um, so you had to write all your own stuff unless you wanted to buy it. And and I think that that was a huge, it was a great experience for me to do it. Again, I probably did most of it wrong. I'm pretty sure I did. But like, you know, you're when you finish, you're like, oh, I've done so many things. Yes, hooray. Um, but I I probably would have gotten six or seven times more work done if I had been able to draw on other people's work. Um, even the other people's work that was happening back then. Like, sure, now I could like I could just open up, I can import NLTK and it recreates a whole decade of my life, basically. Um, but you know, even just if we had been able to more effectively share back then, I, I think. I could have, we all probably could have gotten a lot more time. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with the direction that things have taken. And I, I think you're right, is open source has really um, just opened up the system for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a big fan of open source. Yeah. Uh, me too now. I, well, I, you know, I had to write all my own stuff. So I wasn't sure how to trust other people's code for a long time. I can see that. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I use something like, I would use libraries like Boost, um, which are, you know, pretty like broadly developed and, you know, lots of hands in them. But coming into Python, you know, I spent most of my early career was all C and writing it myself. And, um, and then I did a stint as a game developer and it was more C and writing it myself. And then I got into ML research and the kind of jump into the Python pool was 
at once really refreshing and amazing and at the same time really scary and counterintuitive like mm. there's all this stuff here but is it right like am i right do i know what right is can i can i like honestly evaluate all this stuff um i was i was mentoring someone uh who was just getting started um in in numpy um a couple weeks ago and he was saying that you know, he was an old school developer. Like he was writing like, um, you know, information retrieval systems in C, like in the eighties. Like he was, he's, but he's, he's just getting back into programming now. Um, and he was just starstruck at, at the possibilities with, you know, just NumPy, just NumPy by itself. Mm -hmm. It was like, this thing is magic. And it is the magic I've been hoping for my entire life. And I was like, I know, I, I have had this experience. I, I started doing this work and I was like, oh, somebody did it all. Somebody like took all the hard stuff and did it. It was great. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a revelation, I think, to, to when I finally, you know, realized that I, I all these people are, you know, smart. <laughs> They're like so much smarter than me. So, you know, they're gonna at least do as, as good of a job as I would and probably much better. So that's it was a that was a great day for for Phil and machine learning. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Like I can I could implement it, but it's not gonna be as, you know, performant as something implemented by a software engineer, but that's what they do. And I spent, you know, the time where I could have been learning how to do that reading more math so I could, you know, understand more models. Exactly. It is like, I feel like I can more effectively make that balance now. Like mm -hmm. before, you know, it was, everything was on you. And now it's like all of these brilliant people are doing all of this brilliant stuff. And I can just concentrate on my own, <laughs> hopefully brilliant stuff, but probably, you know, but uh, I love the fact that there are so many giants to stand on the shoulders of now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a it's a great time to be in the field. Yeah, it really is. Very exciting. Uh, speaking of exciting, have you run into anything recently that you've been very delighted by? Maybe blog post or new method or Ooh, uh, let's see. So I have been very uh occupied in the last few months. Uh I just started at Kaggle, I think, uh last May. So yeah. I'm just coming out of my onboarding um and so i've been like you know kind of out of the the reading um mix i have been keeping up with some cool game stuff i did see something really interesting about like breadcrumbs and reinforcement learning the other day which i was like Ooh, that's pretty fun um yeah like um you know reinforcement learning you're you're looking for the response to hitting a goal right mm -hmm. but in some games, at least, those goals can be far away and possibly never reachable. Um, so it was such a like interesting small idea. It seemed kind of awesome. I love small ideas because like then I can do them <laughs> without, without having to hurt my brain. Um, hopefully, so you can you know you can create these sort of interim goals essentially mm -hmm. that lead you to um that lead you hopefully procedurally to these larger goals that are actually the goals of the game mm -hmm. uh, and eventually you can kind of like uh, fade that support system you, know, you can pull it away and not have the the rl needed anymore but i was like ooh, that's a smart move it's so like intuitive and and clear and it seemed really neat so that's that's what i've been kind of keeping up with i guess <laughs> but i'll yeah i uh so almost like creating a, like digging out a little bit of a trough in the gradient. Exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't been super keeping up with the reinforcement learning literature. And there's just so much, man. There's so much. There's a ton of great things happening. Um, it's, I tend to be very, um, you know, if amazing things are happening, I tend to kind of like keep my ear to the ground. And then when there's a, when there's like a paper that everyone's like, this is the best paper ever, then I read that. <laughs> but everything in between, um, it's really like, 
I have some very like specific interests. Mm -hmm. um, not even like within NLP, there's a lot that happens where it's like, oh, um, oh neat, that's amazing. You've you've totally done something really cool there. Um, but I have like, I, I just have very like, very uh, specific, yeah, very specific interests in that I that I really get into. Um, which tend to be more on the sort of object representation side of NLP, which is kind of a an interesting area. Like there's very obvious and also very intuitive ways to do object representation, but there's also those assumptions that we talked about are are absolutely the the foundation of most of object representation. So I, that's that's where I tend to spend my time reading um, when I have time for reading, which hopefully I will soon. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I am a little less drawn to the semantics syntax side than I am to like character level representations um, because of my own background, but. Fun character level stuff is really fun. I love like the it's it's. It's just one of those areas where it's like, oh, okay. So this makes a lot of sense. And it's like, if you could act, if every advance there feels like it helps everybody else, like, which is, which is, a, you know, a thing definitely in, you know, academia in general, but it feels like those, the low level wins from that, from character level work is just loud. It, it absolutely, I was, I, uh, I think three or four years ago, I wrote a paper that was basically based on an insight that I had after I read a bunch of like character level papers and I was like, that could work. And then it worked. And then I was like, Ooh, wow. Something I did worked. Let's go. Um, but yeah, it's character level work. I find really inspiring, even if I'm, I'm that's not necessarily my, uh, my area that I'm, you know, focused on at any point, but it's whenever I dip into it, I come away with like 10 new ideas. So definitely, it's, I, there's just so much going on. You can't keep up with everything. No. And <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm definitely more of like, uh, like I've been a programmer since I was like, you know, yay high. Um, so I think that that, that tends to be more of my area where, you know, I love machine learning and I've been, doing it since I started, you know, being a professional programmer, but I also just really love to like dig into things with code, mm -hmm. which, yeah, you'll, you'll more often find me like trying to reproduce a baseline from a paper than like reading the paper and all of its citations. <laughs> That's, I mean, that, it's a perfectly valid way to interact with the literature. Oh, thank you. That's a, uh, I wasn't sure. I'm like, oh, am I being like, am I being not very helpful right now? I don't know. This seems like a lot of fun. So I do the fun stuff. <laughs> Is there um, anything else you want to share before we we wrap up? Uh, let's see. Oh, um, so I'm going to be launching, and sometime in the next month or so, another ciphertext challenge. Um, yes. So we take we take some known sets of text. Mm -hmm. And we encrypt them using a series of simple ciphers, and then you know a, a progression of simple ciphers. So there's like very easy things. You maybe a substitution cipher, and then there's veneer ciphers and rail fence, and then we go further and further into weirdness. Um, it was really fun last time, and I'm going to be launching that again. So hopefully, hopefully people will take part and have a lot of fun with it again. So it almost sounds like a computational uh, Olympiad sort of challenge. It, but not doing it by hand. It's more of a puzzle than, um, I mean, you can absolutely use, you know, kind of standard NLP techniques, even on the the encrypted cipher text, it still works. I, I tried to keep, um, I tried to use uh, ciphers where um, it didn't mess with that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is it is a little bit more of a puzzler than, than your normal gaggle competition, I guess, which I hopefully is part of why it's fun, but. Yeah, that does sound fun. I'll just keep an eye out for that when it when it finally I, arrives. I will let you know. You should you should totally compete. There were some awesome kernels from the last one. Like people who did like an entire set of crypt analysis in kernels. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah, That's I really was so cool. impressed. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm so glad I did this. <laughs> 
Uh, well, thanks so much for joining me. I uh, don't want it to go too, too long because eventually people will just sort of like be lulled to sleep by our hopefully uh, amicable conversation. You've been to one of my talks. <laughs> well, I'm sure that you are a very engaging speaker. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there were some people sleeping at my last one. We'll see. <laughs> There's always people sleeping at talks, though. Some people where they get the best rest is just like, all right, I'm ready for the information, and then they immediately fall asleep. They're like, okay, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then they're out. <laughs> oh, I like that way of thinking about it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, so uh, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Thanks for joining me, Phil, and I'll see you. Well, I'll see you in, like, team stuff, but anybody can see you on Kaggle. <laughs> Hello. Okay, thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Phil. Bye. Right. Bye.